This video is the last in a series of worksheet basics. Make sure you've viewed all previous videos in this series before this final tutorial if you're unfamiliar with any concepts covered here. Once you've created Applied Criteria 2 and sorted your worksheet, it's time to add a few finishing touches to format and appearance. As explained in Worksheet Basics, Worksheet Interface and Formatting Cells, various cells can be given different typefaces, alignment, fills, and borders. For this example, we'll be tidying up a freshly made window schedule. We'll start by cleaning up the extra empty rows at the bottom of this worksheet. Select the empty rows to highlight all cells within that row. You can hold Control or Command to select multiple rows. Then, click the Worksheet menu button, Delete, Rows. Now, we only have the cells we want. We can format the text within them as desired. I'll select the title row and click the worksheet menu, Format Cells. Then, alter the alignment and font to my liking. You may see an unexpected row right below the title. This is called the database header row. In this case, it is the database header row for this window schedule. This row contains the function that controls what will be pulled from the database and displayed in the cells below. We will turn this row off for the final worksheet, but before we do that, let's add a column to display the image of each of the window objects for easy identification. Select the A column by clicking in the column header at the top of the column. Then, Worksheet Menu, Insert, Columns. One column will be inserted to the left of the selected column. If we had wanted this column ordered between A and B, instead of to the left of A, we would have selected column B first. Note that the column order can always be changed by dragging the column header with the pointer. Now that we have a new column, we can simply title it Image. Next, in the database header row, we can enter the equals image function, then press enter. The images will populate into this field automatically from each of the window objects 2D graphics. This also works just as easily with plants, doors, wall styles, as well as most symbols. We'll also select all the image cells and format them to display the image in a right isometric view in hidden line rendering so that we can tell them apart easily. Next, select the database header row again. You may have noticed the three sorting icons become enabled on the top left. Since we have a few duplicates of various items in the ID column, click and drag SUM onto that row, B. You should see the duplicates disappear and the quantities update to reflect the SUM. Now that we've used the database header row to add the images and SUM the ID field, we can hide it. Click the Worksheet menu, then uncheck Database Headers. This does not delete the database headers, it only removes them from view. They can be recalled to modify any of the columns at any time via the worksheet menu. A few of the other cells here need some additional formatting as well. For instance, there are width, height, and other columns that list a dimension value, but not any sort of unit. To add the unit mark, we can click and drag to select all these cells, then the worksheet menu, format cells, number, then set these cells to dimension formatting. Once we click OK, we see that the values are updated with an expected unit mark, which is controlled by document settings units. Alternatively, rather than clicking and dragging to select the desired cells, we can also edit the format of the database header cell as well, which will apply that change to all of the items within that column. This video is just one in a number of videos designed to explain the creation and use of worksheets. We hope these tutorials have helped to increase your understanding of worksheets in Vectorworks.